In this video, we're going to review super quickly how to do an SN diagram, the general procedure for just doing fully reversed stress. That is a stress wave that looks kind of like this, where we have no mean stress. It's reversed around the x-axis or the stress axis with an amplitude, a half wave amplitude of sigma A. And to remind ourselves, the SN diagram shows us the relationship between this level of alternating stress and the number of cycles to failure for that zero mean stress case. So our general procedure is going to be to select a material to calculate the strength at a thousand cycles or SM and SE prime which is the uncorrected endurance strength for a steel or if we're using an aluminum or a bronze or a steel or another alloy that doesn't have a knee we're going to use the SF prime. We're then going to calculate correction factors to describe how the situation that we're designing for is different than the situation that we have here. In other words, the situation that we had in the lab on the RR more bending test machine. We're going to calculate a corrected curve, this solid line here, which is reduced, and then draw our final SN diagram using a graphing program. This first step is to select the material. And so for this purpose here, we're going to select 1095 steel. It's a high carbon steel, pretty high yield strength, really high ultimate tensile strength of 112 KSI and 176 KSI respectively. So that was that step, pretty easy. Now we're going to calculate SM and SE prime. SM, the strength at 1000 cycles, is dependent only on the type of loading and the ultimate tensile strength. So for bending, the strength at 1000 cycles is 90% of the ultimate tensile strength. So an alternating stress and 90% of the ultimate tensile strength will cause failure at 1000 cycles. 75% of the ultimate tensile strength if that is an axial load. And so we're going to calculate SM and SE prime. SM, let's assume for a moment that we are doing a bending stress here, that, that the stresses we are exerting on this are only stressing those outer fibers of the material. So our SM is 158 KSI or 90% of the ultimate tensile strength. And our uncorrected endurance strength or the endurance strength we would expect to see in a lab setting on the RMOR bending tester would be 88 KSI because we have an ultimate tensile strength less than 200 KSI, so it's half of the ultimate tensile strength. We're going to calculate our correction factors. I'm not going to run through these one by one, aside from just to say C load, because we've got bending is one. C size, let's assume uh, 3 8 inch diameter right now. That gives us a C size of 0.93. A surface finish, actually, I think that's for a half inch. A uh, surface finish, let's assume that this is kind of as machined, so a, a surface finish of about an RA125 or so, something you get off of a mill or a lathe. And so our surface finish combined with our ultimate tensile strength gives us a C surf of 0.66. C temp, we're going to run this under 450 degrees, so C temp is 1. And let's say a, a reliability that gives us a C reliability of 0.753. There we've got our correction factors, and from that we can then calculate our corrected endurance strength. In other words, the endurance strength that we expect in practice as compared to that that we would get in the lab setting. So using our correction factors, we multiply them all together and multiply them by the uncorrected endurance strength to find our actual projection for the endurance strength, this lower line down here. And so our corrected endurance strength is 41 KSI compared to 88 KSI. That's a pretty significant reduction, mostly driven by the surface finish and the reliability. And so now we want to draw the SN diagram. In order to do that, we are going to find two points. We've got SM at 1,000 cycles and we've got SE at 1 million cycles. Knowing that, the equation for this line is log of sigma A is equal to log of A n to the B because this function follows the, the form A n to the B. N is the number of cycles, sigma A is obviously the output, and we need to solve for A and B. This is a linear equation in log space. It's log of sigma a is equal to log a plus b log n. This is very much, very much like y equals mx plus b. Uh, in this case, we can find the slope, which is this b constant here, by taking the rise over the run. The run here is log of 10 to the 3 minus log of 10 to the 6th. So this bottom part is negative 3. And we can find the rise with log of sm over se. So we find B 
to be equal to negative 0 0.195. If I then plug that back into the original equation and pick either point, SM or SE, I have two points on the curve, I can say that log of the strength of a thousand cycles, which is 158,000, is equal to log of a n to the b. I know n is 1,000. I know that b is negative 0 0.195. And so then I can divide out and simply solve for a. In this case, we get that a is 608,900. b is negative 0 0.195. And now I have my function, and I'm ready to graph it. So now we're going to take it over to Cy Davis, which is a really good graphing program. And we're going to put this graph together in a format that we can actually use either for design or for a professional presentation. To make professional plots, we usually use good programs that are not Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Excel does not make professional looking plots, at least not in an engineering parlance, very easily. It takes a lot of work. You can do it, but there are other programs that are much better. Cy Davis is one of those programs. It's a clone of a commercial program called Origin, and so this is an open source project that mirrors a lot of the functionality of Origin, but does so with no cost to you and it's a pretty low footprint program. It doesn't consume a lot of space on your hard drive, et cetera. It's pretty easy to run, and it's pretty intuitive. So I like to use it for professional quality plots. I use it for plots that I make for publications and that type of thing. So I'm gonna show you how we can make our SN diagram in Cy Davis, and we'll go through some nice things about how Cy Davis works as a result. So Cy Davis has a data entry tool here where you can put in tabular data from Excel. We're not gonna go over that in this program or in this particular recording, what we are going to go over is the function plot. So go to File, New, and then New Function Plot. And we just came up with a function, 608,900 times, so this is the right side of the graphing equation. f of x is going to be the y-axis. n is going to be our x-axis, right? So it, it's a function of x. So 608,900 times x to the negative 0 0.195. And I want to plot that from x is 1,000 to x is one million. And there we go. Straight away gives me a nice function plot, nice pretty plot. Here's the thing, I want this to appear as linear. My SN diagram is typically linear, so to do that I need to do logarithmic axes on both axes. So I need to put these axes as logarithmic. I need to add grid lines so that I can read off of it because I'm going to use this as a design tool. I'm going to set my axes to reasonable numbers that make sense. I want to see the material knee, etc. I'm going to take out the title, which I can do simply by right-clicking on it and hitting delete. Very easy. This tool is very intuitive. I can simply click on the legend and drag it to where I want it to be. Real easy. I'm going to edit my axis titles and hopefully by the end of all of that we are going to have a nice quality plot. So most of the work that you're going to be doing is in the graphing options dialog, which uh, or the general plot options, which you can get by double clicking on either axis. Here I have control over all the axes. So even if I double click on the left axis, I can from there manipulate the bottom axis. If I want to add dual axes to use either different units or graph multiple things at once on the same plot to save space, I can put dual axes on here very easily. I can add a top axis and a right axis and then tie different functions to different axes. But that's, again, for a different intro. So if we go to the bottom axis here, for example, I want this to be a logarithmic axis. So I simply drop, click on the drop down and click logarithmic. Now, I can't show 0 on a logarithmic axis. So it's showing 1 times 10 to the negative 100th. I want this to start at 1,000. And I actually want it to go to 10 million because I want to see the knee in the graph, which we haven't put in yet. We notice that just by putting that first axis as logarithmic, I still have a curve here. It's still not linear. Both axes need to be logarithmic for the SN curve. So I'm going to click on left. And I'm going to say, OK, make that logarithmic as well. And now I see the linear behavior that I expect. We actually want this to go from 20,000 up to 160,000 because we'll probably be designing for stress levels down here. And so that's going to give us a little bit more perspective. And we can apply that. Now I'm going to hit OK, and what I want to do is actually add a second function here that's a constant that names y as a constant from a million cycles to 10 million cycles to show that knee. So I'm going to right click in, in the plot area and click on add function. And I'm going to tell it 41,000 is the y value from x is 1 million to x is 10 million. And I really only need two points since that's going to be a straight line. 
and it's going to screw up my axes because it's going to automatically scale axes whenever you add a function. It just does that, which sometimes is nice and sometimes it's kind of a pain. So I'm going to reset these to where I wanted them, 20,000 and 160,000. And seven ticks ought to give us the resolution that we want. And so we see the SN diagram starting to look like we want it to look. A couple of things I want to change. I want to give it a y-axis title that makes sense. So the y-axis is plotting alternating stress. I'm going to give it the variable name in the axis title so that everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about here. This is really important. So I'm going to click on these. These two buttons give you lowercase Greek letters and uppercase Greek letters respectively. And you just click and it'll insert it. Now, Cy Davis uses HTML coding as a way to superscript, subscript, and manipulate text. I can do that automatically with the GUI if I'm not familiar with that. I can just select the A. I want to subscript that A, so I click the subscript button. Once I get used to using this and I know what the code looks like, I can just type those in and it's actually a little bit quicker than selecting and clicking sometimes. So I'm plotting sigma A. If I apply that, I can see that typed out. And that is in the units of PSI. I better have a variable name and I better have a unit if there are units attached to the variable being plotted on that axis. Now I'm going to give this a line break, which you can do with the break command just to separate the title a little bit from these numbers to make it a little bit cleaner. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other axis. Uh, if you want to change the font or anything else, you can select that text and then hit font and then manipulate that. But for right now, I think our font looks pretty reasonable. I'm going to double click on the X axis and do the same thing. I'm going to give it a line break before I start typing to again separate that from the numbers on the axis. And on the X axis, we are plotting the number of cycles to failure. And that variable name is N. And that's a counting variable, so there are really no units. So we're getting closer. We want our legend to look better. And I would like to fix the way that this text looks. And I want to add a grid. So again, the axis, the grid, and most of the stuff from the plot can be edited by double clicking on the axis. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to enable the grid and enable it for the horizontal and vertical directions both and enable both the major grids and the minor grids. The default from the program is to use blue for the major grids and then hashed gray for the minor grids. I don't like the blue. The blue is just a little too loud. It's a little too difficult to process visually. It's just not very appealing to the eye. I can get just as good of an ability to read off of the graph by simply changing these to gray and then using hash lines. And it's much easier on the eyes, but if I need to take readings so that I'm using this as a design tool, I can do a much better job with a nice fine grid like this. Again, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to axis so I can edit the way that these numbers are represented. So I'm going to go to format and switch that to decimal. I don't need four decimal places of precision. Uh, zero is just fine. From the same menu, I can go to the bottom and tell it that I want the same thing, decimal with just zero precision. And so now this reads much more naturally, 20,000 to 160,000, 1,000 to 10 million on the two axes. So we're awfully close here to a final product. The last thing I need to do is edit this legend so that the variable names and the function are matching the variable names that I've put in my axis labels. And also, I need to make the back opaque. So I can double click on my legend. I don't need that second line that tells me that the second part of the function is a constant. I know that. I don't need to know that this is called F1. So I can take that out. And what I actually want to do is say sigma A. So I'm going to click on sigma. And then I'm going to type A and hit the subscript button. Sigma A is equal to 608,900 times N is my actual variable name there. And instead of using the caret, I'm actually going to superscript this so it looks nice and pretty. So I'm going to select that and then hit the superscript button. And if I hit apply, I can see that label. Now it looks really nicely formatted, but the text isn't big enough to read. So I'm going to select the text in here, go to the font, and I'm going to bring that up in size a little bit. And so now I've brought that up in size. Last thing I need to do is make the background for the legend opaque. To do that, I'm going to set this to the maximum value of 255. You can also click the up arrow if you so desire. And now we have a nice professional plot that I can print this out. I can actually use this as a design tool. This is basically the minimum amount of work that I would expect on any plot that you turn in in any of my classes. I expect 
you to create good plots that are of quality commensurate with what you're going to be expected to provide in the professional setting, which would be something like this. Not that difficult, takes just a little bit of extra time. This is arguably a much better graph than you're going to get out of just the default Excel settings. So if I want to export this, I go to File and then Export Graph and Current if you've got that graph activated and then you can save it. I'm going to save mine as SN Diagram 3 so I don't overwrite any of my previous work. Hit Save and now that's ready to be imported into my document or whatever. So that's how you plot a function and then edit it so that your plot looks good inside Davis.